Bernie Sanders facing some heat as the Washington Post reports some members of his own campaign are claiming they are not being paid the $15 minimum wage their candidate champions for. Field organizers for the Sanders campaign, who currently make about $36,000 a year, tell the Post they work a minimum of 60 hours a week, which works out to less than $13 an hour. Union members say in a drafted letter that this is to be expected, uh, and it's expected to be sent to the campaign manager. Quote, many field staffers are barely managing to survive financially, which is severely impacting our team's productivity and morale. Some field organizers have already left the campaign as a result. End quote. Zachary, let's start with you. What do you make of this? Well, it's certainly not particularly good optics for the campaign. And, and Sanders has been very good at raising a lot of money, so it's not like they are... A, it's not like they couldn't pay this amount. You know, they're not a bootstrap campaign. So it's a little puzzling that he wouldn't put his money where his mouth is, literally, in this particular case. And again, it's money that he has, and it's money that you could certainly pay these people. So not the best PR known to mankind right now for Bernie Sanders and his campaign. Gary, your thoughts? Well, well the great thing is it's a, it's a real learning lesson here. Look, I'm going to paraphrase and old saw and give the definition of a conservative it's a liberal who has to manage a payroll bernie is basically with his campaign funds and the money he gathers has to pay all these people he's learning the hard lesson that everyone that has had a payroll has had to fire people has had to hire people who's an entrepreneur has to learn in that when the government starts to dictate how much you make it's very tough to run an organization i guarantee if there was no minimum wage these people would probably be happy to work with sanders knowing that they have to make this arbitrary fifteen dollars an hour has raised their hackles probably rightly so they're probably working way more than that thirty six thousand dollars a week so I hope this is raised as an issue and Bernie starts to learn, although he won't, what it's like to run a company in America when the government dictates certain parameters of your organization. Exactly. You know, to, to, to build on um, Gary's point, you know, the thing is, is that he gave the typical response that CEOs give, right, when, they, when they're questioned on wages. You know what? We pay similar to all competitors and that's the same excuse that bernie sanders gave so that he's really not walking the walk and but he's talking the talk but also you know if i would if i were to give a suggestion to all the employees in the campaign you know like we i see in uh, new york city what they need to do is get that big balloon rat <laughs> blow it up as big as they can get it and sit it right outside of bernie sanders headquarters and say you know what you're the rat pay fair wages you one. know, the irony is he encouraged his workers to unionize. It's, I think it would be funny if he loses because he can't compete with his competitors because he has to pay higher than market wages. But that is basically, look, if he was actually smart about this policy, he would come back and say, this is exactly why you need a federal law, because I can't pay my workers more than my competitors do, or I will go out of business and not win the presidency. But he's not even, like, saying that. He kind of gets lost, and I encourage them to whatever. Look, the bottom line is it highlights why a federal minimum wage isn't such a great idea if it's high. As he said, it, it doesn't seem like that novel an idea when he invented it, because when he invented it, it was even higher. In 20 years, $15 is not going to seem like a very high minimum wage. The bottom line is states and cities if should be doing these above kind of normal ones. That's what we've seen going on. It'll work for some of them. It won't work for others. But to set the federal level at a level when some states are so much lower uh, income levels and so much lower uh, cost of living than other areas doesn't even make any sense to have it this high. Here's the thing, though, guys. I just want to make one point that's really crucial here. It's that the uh, campaign workers for Sanders, they are not hourly workers. They are paid on a salary. And there are certain industries where you just sort of accept that it's, it's a great job and you want to be on that team and you're willing to take that salary. They agree to this. Yeah, yeah. entry-level media being one of them. Um, <laughs> so I want to know from Jonas and Gary, when the federal government passed the first minimum wage laws in the 1960s, I mean, it actually goes back before that, those were comparatively high. Those, that, was a, that was a pretty high mark. Are you opposed to that? Would you have been, if we had been having this panel in 1967, would you have had the same responses to a federally mandated minimum wage? No, in fact, totally. what I don't I understand think, is first of all, why you, wasn't... Can't, you can't have the cost of living, as I'm sure Jonas will agree when he said a federally mandated wage, 
is entirely different in Des Moines than it is in New York City. So that's one fallacy. The country is not equal. Two, it just depends on supply and demand out there. You know that, Zach. At, at, there will be more than enough people at the minimum wage applying to the Walmart and down the street. You know, the local, uh, you know, coffee shop probably can't get anyone to work. It just depends on supply and demand. I don't think government is in the, is, should be in the business of dictating any economics, no matter what they think is fair to any company. A couple of questions here, because uh, the House did pass, uh, a, a, it did pass a bill saying that minimum wage should be raised gradually. It's not likely to pass in the Senate. But do you think that this is the start of the turning of the tide here? I think it should have been turned into an index system to inflation a long time ago. Democrats have had plenty of opportunities and power to set this so they don't have to have this political football to play with. But I also think it should be set at a level that is below, essentially, a high wage so it doesn't create disruption in the workforce. As you would imagine, there's obviously a level that would shut down the economy. If there was a $50 minimum wage, things would stop working. So to arbitrarily pick 15, a level that I believe is higher than it originally was, adjusting for inflation, could cause disruptions, particularly in areas where that is a very high wage. It's hardly have any effect in New York City, but that's why it needs to be more localized, tied to cost of living, and indexed to inflation to make the problem go away. Technically, we don't need one, but I think it makes the workers not want to revolt, and that's an important thing for capitalism to have, too. So I think it should be there at some level.